as I contemplated the message that God was bringing to my mind, I thought of this story of Nebuchadnezzar. And God had a hidden message for Nebuchadnezzar. And looking at the dream as it was given on the left, and then seeing how Nebuchadnezzar took that dream, eventually he built a statue, what? Of all gold, wanting to promote the idea that his kingdom isn't going to end. But the hidden message was the next image, and that is the Most High still rules in the kingdom of men. It took, took Nebuchadnezzar a while to get that. Um, he was stubborn like I am, and God had to even uh, send him on a journey, on a, on a camping trip for seven years um, to uh, get his thoughts together. But in the end, Nebuchadnezzar understood that the Most High still rules in the kingdom of men. God has many hidden messages, but we don't always hear them. It takes ears to hear as God said, um, as Christ said. Let's begin with prayer. Holy God in heaven, um, we ask for your continued presence as we look at your word. Guide and direct us. Teach us uh, from your storehouse. We praise you and we thank you for hearing us. In Christ's name, amen. This slide actually came, I believe, from one of the slides I used in the last message, but I wanted to read through it because there's a, a thought there. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. My understanding as I have grown as a Christian, I have gone through periods of times, years in my life, being a Christian still, but not being alive. Not being alive as a Christian. I don't know if you can, uh, you think of, if you think of um, sin as a, a killing disease like cancer can be, um, we sometimes, um, it comes back, in other words, in our lives. It creeps back into our lives and begins to take over again, but you continue on, at that point, it's in a way a facade of being a Christian even though you're not um, at heart living for Christ or even praying much or even reading the Word of God much, even spending much time with Him at all. But you know what is right. You don't want to abandon it, so you continue on um, in, in that sense. But I have come to understand that the messages of God are not for everyone. God sends messages, messages for his people, by and large. And by and large, the world does not comprehend. Now, even the message of the Messiah to come, did the, um, we'll say, legalistic Pharisees, or let's say the ones that opposed Christ, did they understand the message that God had sent them about the Messiah to come? They thought they did. They were adamant about it, and they were adamant about, you, uh, you know, protecting the name of the Lord. Even Paul, when he was um, um, zealously going out and throwing the, the, the Christians into prison and confiscating their goods, he thought he was serving God. Now, God is so awesome that he knows the heart of the individual even when we're off track. And he knew, I believe, that Paul wanted, or Saul, wanted to serve the living God. And he really did love the name of the Lord, I believe. But his ideology was off track because, in a sense, up until this moment, he didn't have ears to hear. 
what the Holy Spirit was telling him, or else he would not be persecuting the way, as they called it, or Jesus Christ in the new movement, the new, King, the new Testament church. It took a personal appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ to stop him and make him realize what he was doing. Are we that stubborn or Do we think that highly of our own understanding and of our own opinion that we cannot humbly seek God in prayer? Ask Him, Lord, I want to be on the right path. Show me the right way. Do you believe that one of you sitting here, if you said that to God, that any one of you sitting here or watching or or, uh, online that God would refuse that prayer? If a person is seeking the truth, that God would say, oh, not you. I've had enough of you. Is that the spirit and heart of God that you know? It isn't, it isn't the, the heart of God and, and the evidence. And it doesn't even matter my feelings. What matters is the evidence of what God is like. And all evidence shows that that is not the way the Lord is. That he wants to give light. I was going to touch on the story of um, the prodigal son, and we're not going there today. But when that young man came to himself, as it says, or he... He woke up, you might say, from, from the delusion that he was living and realized how far he had fallen. And he even thought, I'll just go back and serve him as a servant. Maybe he'll take me back and let me work in the barn or work out in the whatever. Maybe because I know at least he has food there. And I'm starving here. But as I read the story... Wow, (laughs) I bring myself to this point all the time. When he was still a great way off, the father saw him. So the father was looking for one day, maybe my son will come home. Maybe in our day and age you might say, you're always checking the Facebook post, or you're you're checking on your child that's off somewhere. Maybe one day they'll, they'll, they'll turn around. And you keep checking in on them, hoping and praying that they'll return. Let's move on to the next slide here. But keep in mind that there are those in this world, even in the church, that do not comprehend the things of God as intelligent as they are, as educated as they are. In Corinthians, Paul said, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this world, or the God of this age, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So there is a group, and I I think the pastor said this the other week, I, 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 I think of it in these terms. Without Christ, we are dead men walking. We're dead women walking. We have a time, a period of time of... Probation where God has given us life, but we do not have life if we do not have Christ. The promise of life everlasting is in Christ and Christ alone. And so to those that do not have Christ, they can even take the name of Christ, can they not? They can claim the name of Christ. As a matter of fact, I believe one of the prophecies that Christ said, um, uh, many will come in my name saying that I am Christ. I know in another place it says there will be, be other false Christs. But I believe he was saying here that there will be many coming in my name saying I am the Christ. But will deceive many. There are many Christians in the world that reject the law of God. Now has the law of God 
somehow become of none effect any longer. I can now steal, lie, kill, commit adultery, serve idols, whatever else it may be. Is the law of God vanquished? We know better than that. The law of God is eternal as the law who made it is eternal. So there are those that even calling themselves Christian are not connected and grafted into Christ. Somehow they have fallen or, or, or grown apart, let's say. Even if at one time they were connected, the world has crept in. Christ told a parable about seed on good stone, uh, you know, on good ground and seed on the rock, seed on the wayside and so on and how this, it's the same seed but it's the ground that matters. Are we ready and willing to receive the truths of God? You know, I have discovered the text that says that, um, um, that we must receive a love of the truth, which tells me that in my carnal nature without Christ, I do not love the truth. I have to receive that. This is where I must pray. Ask God, give me truth. I want truth. Take my error and make me to understand truth. So, here are those that are perishing, and then the God of this world, who is who? Satan, though Christ is the rightful ruler of this world, Satan usurped his authority in this world, and, 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 and the world actually was judged, along with sa Satan, at the cross. Christ said, now this world is judged. Now the prince uh, of this world is judged. But, Satan would like to keep them blinded in darkness. I maintain this is why we have to pray for our, our family. If, you're, if a family member is playing around with the world, Satan would like to shut them out into darkness and never see the light. But if you, a child of God, lifts up their name to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and asks that they be given an opportunity to see and to know and have another opportunity to hear, I believe God will hear you because of Christ and give that family member an opportunity and hold back the, the, the darkness and shine on them. But, because it says, what do they need here? They need the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That's what needs to shine on them. But I want to just, I wanna, I'm trying to consider one aspect of this, folks. What makes a person able to hear and see the light. Is it because they were baptized? Is it because they became a member of the correct church? Whatever that may be. Wherever that may be. Is that what enables them? Let me ask you something. Was Caiaphas a member of the true church of God in his day? He was. But he did not have ears to hear. He had shut his heart. And I would say from what I have read and know, because of his own pride and power, that became his God. And he didn't have a place for another God, especially this humble carpenter, you know. No place for that. So being a member of the Umatilla Seventh-day Adventist Church or attending that church is not what gives you ears to hear. You humbling yourself before the living God and asking for it is what gives, what, what unlocks. We're going to read on, but there is, but you, just because you're educated, just because you went to... Southern Missionary College, some of you. And then Southern College, some of you. What's it called now? Southern Adventist University, some of you. I don't know if I'm saying them in the right order. <laughs> but the, the name has changed. 
But just, or, or Andrews University, or Walla Walla, or Loma Linda, or name them off, right? Just because you've gone to our Gateway Academy and then Forest Lake Academy, that does not give you ears to hear. It is a spiritual discernment that we lack and that we need. Thomas said to Christ, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? Now I just, I want you to uh, understand something here. These disciples were in training. He had a few short years to work with them. Now if Christ knew the prophecies, when he was baptized, he probably knew he had only a few short years. Knowing the prophecy in Daniel, the week and the week cut off in the middle and so on and so on. So, were, were they always on the mark all the way along the way, the, the apostles, as they were in training? As I see it, even after the, the, the crucifixion, Peter had to go through a terrible valley till he was retrieved from that. And then it wasn't even until, I believe, it wasn't even until the outpouring of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit was poured out that they really finally got it. But they were in the preparatory time to prepare their hearts and minds to receive. Let me ask you Seventh-day Adventist Christian, or just Christian, don't know if you're all Seventh-day Adventist, do you want to see, receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last day? You have to prepare for that. It does not fall on everyone. Even if you call yourself a Christian. Even if you're a fourth, fifth generation Christian. Even if your great, 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 great grandfather was who? Uh, uh, William Miller. Or, or, or how about going back farther than that? Uh, Luther. Or whoever it may be. That does not make the difference. You need to seek. And you will find, I believe. So here, they're still struggling with this. And, and Christ said he is about to leave. And they're not going to be able to find him. And he's like, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Christ, look at the answer that is always given in Scripture. It just flies right past us, though. Because the carnal mind can, has a hard time. Uh, I, carnal mind cannot comprehend it. But as we are struggling to move from our carnal thinking into spiritual thinking, as we are growing the path of the just as a shining light that shines more and more under the perfect day, as we are growing as Christians, when we struggle with these ideas, and our mind by the Holy Spirit, finally the light comes on, and it dawns on us what the Lord is trying to say. That's who these messages are for. Those who seek with their whole heart. Those that desire with their whole being. I would say the disciples did. They desired with their whole being to be with, with Christ. Too bad Judas didn't. But Christ answered, Do you believe this? I am the way. Do you believe that, Seventh-day Adventist Christian? That Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In Colossians 2 it says, For I want you to know that a great... What a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. Now this was the actual city of Laodicea. You are of the church's Laodicea of our day, are you not? From my understanding, out of the seven churches, it was the last, right? And as for many as have not seen my face in the flesh, this is Paul speaking, uh, that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love. And by the way, this concept is throughout the New Testament church. 
And if you have ought against your brother, you had better pray for God to change your heart. Because that is not a part of God's church. God loves us even when we're wayward and we're failing and we're doing wrong. He gave His life while we were yet sinners. And He wants us to be as He is. He wants us to be transformed into His image and be like Him. That they may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to... Okay, first thing He says is knit together in love. And attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. To the knowledge of what? The mystery. Does that sound like a hidden thing? And attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. To the knowledge of the mystery of God. Both of the Father and of Christ, he clarifies. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So where are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? In your school books? In your school teacher? In your Sabbath school class? In your preacher? In your teacher? Only in as much as they are bringing Christ to you. If they are bringing the Christ of the Bible to you and the truths of the Bible to you in the Holy Spirit, then they are doing that. But the treasures that we seek and need are in God, in Christ, and in the Father. And Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to do that work in us. Praise God. Now a warning in Colossians. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. Do we ever have philosophers of this world with empty deceit who think that just because they're an expert in Hebrew and Greek and et cetera, et cetera, and they're an expert on, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, I'm trying to think of a contemporary, like contemporary in Christ day, uh, study of society uh, and so on that because they're an expert in this somehow they are the authority on truth again only in as much as they are bringing you the truths from the word of God by the Holy Spirit so we have to be like the Bereans we have to study daily to make sure that the preacher standing in this pulpit is preaching truths from the word of God and not from his own mind. Praise God. I believe we have that here. Praise God. Praise God. He has blessed us so many times. Praise God. But beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men. I suggest to you. That you, personally, in your personal prayers, ask God, have I accepted any traditions of men? Am, is that part of my mindset? Is that part of my thinking? Do I deal with life, and do I give advice to a friend? A friend comes to me with marital problems, and I give them advice, not according to your word, but according to the traditions that have been taught me from the world? Is that how I give my advice? Or do I give advice according to the Word of God? Because I will tell you this, brothers and sisters, the Scripture says God hates divorce. That's what the Scriptures say. And so many times we want to sympathize with our friend, and oh, he was so mean, or oh, she was so mean, or... God hates divorce. Now I'm off the topic, but I'm saying, have we accepted worldly philosophies so many times? I think that we are at least tainted by them. And the only way is to shine the light. Who is the light? 
Who is the truth? Who is the way? If you, my friend, Christian, whoever you are, are not spending time with the Lord Jesus Christ daily, you are in danger of receiving the traditions of the world and the pressures of the world. And Satan is going to fight against you. If you turn to the light, don't think it's going to be easy because all of a sudden your car breaks down or you lose your job or whatever it is, trouble comes because Satan does not want you turning around. But that should be evidence that you're on the right path. If you turn your eyes upon Jesus and you decide to spend more time with Him and to pray to Him every day and to seek His face and trouble comes, it is evidence that you're on the right path. Christ said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And so trouble will come. And He, said, he told us it will. All right, what else does this say? Beware lest anyone come according to the basic principles of this world and not according to Christ. Now the only way you are going to tell if a preacher stands in this pulpit and preaches something that is not according to Christ, the only way you are going to be able to tell is if you are connected to the Holy Spirit and you are studying the Word of God. Otherwise you are going to be deceived. Now, I know there may be exceptions to that, but I'm not talking about that. In general, we are required to do what God has put in our hands. And every one of you, probably in your pocket right now, has a Bible, if you have a phone. And every one of you has the Holy Spirit because Jesus Christ gave it. And every one of you has access to the throne room of the living God because Jesus Christ the veil was rent and opened the way. So you have what you need to seek Him. And it says here, So beware, lest they come to you with worldly principles and not according to Christ, for in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And just to bring that to our thinking, number one, this is Colossians, right? Which means we are already in the New Testament era. And does Christ still have a body, a human body? He is the second Adam. And He stands before the Father as really King of Kings of this earth. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And how are you complete? You are complete in Him. Do you believe that? Or do you believe you have to add to the works of God? I believe that if I abide in Christ and He abides in me, He is going to make me into a law keeper. I believe that if I abide in Christ and Christ abides in me, that He is going to give me a new heart. And I am going to love the unlovable. I am going to treat others um, the way God wants me to treat them. Now, I'm not, I'm not stating that we don't fail and fall along the way. We're, we're told there are many times we're going to have to repent and, and say we're sorry. Though I do believe He will complete the work in His church. And we will shine like a light in the world. Revelation 18. The church will be purified by the power of Christ and the Holy Spirit and His Word and He will lift us up as a gem before the world and the earth will be illuminated with the glory. I believe that. But there is nothing I can add to it. I can only let Him do the work. But see, I deem Him faithful. I believe He will do the work. I am not a cheap grace person that thinks I can go about living an, uh, a law-breaking life and I'm just under the grace of Christ. The law was nailed to the cross. Doesn't matter what I do. 
Christ already paid for my sins. I do not believe that. That's a heresy. And it's a lie. But what I do believe, that if I abide in Christ, and He abides in me, and His Word abides in me, and I hear the Holy Spirit because I've tuned my ear to hearing it by daily communion with God, He will perfect me, even me. He will perfect you. Don't be discouraged. He's already done it. He's already made it available. All things were made available at the cross. He has already done it. He has already provided His righteousness. All we have to do is partake of it. Do you believe God is faithful? My friends, we must have the faith of Christ. We have to have it. There is no other way. I, I don't know whether I can say it this way, but I don't believe you can be saved if you don't have the faith of Christ. It requires an unworldly faith. <laughs> an extra-worldly faith. Something out of this world. You need the faith of Christ. Now you are the people that have the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. But you have to receive it. You didn't write the commandments and you have no ability to keep them in yourself. And you also didn't create that kind of faith. Jesus Christ lived it. Walk the path of faith to the very end and drank the cup of all of my guilt and all of my sin so that he could turn around and say, here's my faith, take it. I achieved it for you. My friend, you should be the most joyous Christian on the planet. Everything has been provided for you. There is nothing missing. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him. And by the way, it adds, He is the head of all principality and power. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And all authority has been given to Him, right? Praise God. Another text in Corinthians, Paul says, However, listen now, because this is your goal. You know, your goal isn't to be saved. Your goal is to be a mature Christian. Feeding on the Word of God, walking, just like those apostles were disciples, those disciples became apostles, and they were molded and shaped and when the time was right the Holy Spirit was poured out on them and they went out and transformed the world and they all died for it except one which he should have died multiple times but God kept them alive right but they were matured and I maintain it is the outpouring of the latter rain that fully matures us and brings us to, to perfection but it will happen and when it happens, the end will come. But if you are not receiving the early rain, the former rain, the daily rain of the Holy Spirit in your life, if you are not receiving that rain daily, your crop is going to be withered and almost ready to die. And it would just be washed away when the latter rain, if, if I use my own, <laughs> my own uh, 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 sim symbolism here, when the latter rain comes, have you ever seen a dry ground where all the grass dies away and there's nothing left but sand and, and then all of a sudden there's a rainstorm? What happens to the earth? It's washed away. The latter rain may be pouring all around and not pour on you if you are not receiving the former rain. My friend, there is no assurance just because 20 years ago you accepted the name of Christ if you are not in Him today. We are not amongst those Christians that believe that once you accept Jesus, you're saved and that's it, you're done. It doesn't matter what you do, you will never be lost. The reality is, 
that's true if you abide in Christ. If you abide in Christ, He will never let you go. But if you let the things of this world separate you from Him, you let the worries and cares of this world weigh you down and, and trouble you so much that you don't have time to spend with Him, you don't have time to abide with Him daily, and you're not hearing the Holy Spirit daily, you are not going to be ready for the latter rain. There is a work that needs to be done in me. There is a work that needs to be done in me. Because I will, by God's grace, receive the latter rain. Do you know how I can say that? It isn't because Greg Reese is faithful. It is because the Lord Jesus Christ is faithful. And I have committed my life to Him. It's all I can do. And because I've committed my life to Him, and because I believe in who He is, I want to abide with Him daily. I don't want to go a day without being near Him. So I'm in the Word. I'm in prayer. I'm trusting Him throughout the day. If I sin, I want to turn immediately and repent as soon as He opens my eyes to it. And we walk and grow, and I know that He is able to keep me from falling. And there will be a day, not far from now, when even I could be walking in perfection and not even know it, and the end events are falling all around us, and probation soon closes, and we are sealed. And I would say we don't even know we have been sealed. Because if your eyes are on Christ and not on yourself, you're not worried about it. You believe He's able to do it. Do you believe Jesus Christ is able to seal you? Do you believe Jesus Christ is able to seal you as bad as you've been? As failing as you've been? As wayward as you may have been? Christ is able to complete the work He began in you. Amen. However, I started this text... We speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age. So again, there's two sets of wisdom. The wisdom of this world, the philosophies of this world, and the philosophies of Christ, if you want to put it that way. The wisdom and truth of Christ. Not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. We're Stalin today. Was he powerful in his day? Where's Hitler? Was he powerful in, in his day? Where's the Caesars from Rome? Were they powerful in their day? Where are they now? They're in the same place, the poor pauper that didn't, had a postage stamp to grow a little tomato plant and try to live off of it. The same place that they are. They're in the grave waiting their reward. See, I don't want my reward. I want Jesus Christ's reward. Jesus Christ took my reward. How can I not love Him? How can I not love Him if He took my reward and gave me His reward? How can you not love Him when He does all things for us? But we speak... The wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. Now let's look at this text for a second. This tells me that God has always meant the light to come out. I maintain the first day of creation when Jesus Christ said, let there be light, this world became the focal point of the universe. He intended to display who he was to the universe in this creation. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. I don't like even using that word in the same sentence as, as our or my. My glory. For my glory. 
But what is glory? See, we think of riches and power and a big house and a big car and, you know, whatever it is, power, you know. God's glory is His character. Everywhere I look in the Scriptures, that's what I see. That the glory of God is who He is. That's the glory of God. Is He all-powerful? He's all-powerful. That's not His glory. His glory is who He is. Long-suffering. And by the way, God, again, God is love. He's not loving, though He is, but He is a love. He is love. That's His glory. So what does God design for us before the ages? Life everlasting. It says that life that was promised before time began, in another text. And his, what He ordained was that we would live forever with Him. And we hit a bump in the road on earth. That was his plan for earth. But our forefather and mother let Satan in. And we've all fallen since. But God said, that's not going to stop me. I ordained their glory. And there is nothing that can stop me from doing what I want to do. Is that true? God decided to save the planet earth and there was nothing that could stop him from doing it. Has all the realms of darkness tried? They tried to kill the baby while he was in Bethlehem. They tried all along the way to stop Christ from winning back this earth. But God decided he was going to glorify us with him and sit us on thrones with him. But the rulers of this world thought that their power and glory was here now. That's not so with you. Whoever wants to be great among us must be the servant. Let the Lord Jesus Christ lift you up in due time because you have a beautiful future. But right now, serve Him with your whole heart. Right now, humble yourself before the living God and ask for His presence in your life and serve Him as a faithful servant and He will reward you. He's faithful. He's faithful. He will do it. First Corinthians 2.10 says, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. I'm going to read on. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, this is a text from the previous sermon as well. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. We're looking at a different thing here. The hidden truths of God. Do you not want the hidden truths of God? They are for you. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been what? freely given to us. See, this, the treasures of God, uh, uh, of all the fullness of who He is, and the understanding of God and the truths of what God is doing, it's all there waiting for you. But we spend so much time wanting to take glory for ourselves. I'm smarter than the next guy. I, I, whatever it is, we, we want to take the honor, we want to take the glory, we, or we want to honor or glorify some other human being. I say lift up Christ. Lift up Christ, church. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. 
So I am here to tell you folks, you cannot come, you can't stumble on the truth with your carnal nature and with your earthly mind. It comes from the Spirit of God alone. But what does that say in the previous verse? It is freely given to us. He's not trying to keep it from us. But I think we get in the way. We have our own plans. Mainly we have our own plans for our life. We know what we think we want to have and we know where we think we want to be. And we know we think what we... I don't know if I said that right. And we think we know what we want to do. And so we don't submit under the hand of the living God. We do it our way. I've spent too much of my life doing it my way. I have squandered and wasted the majority of my life doing it my way. Oh, young people, study the scriptures and learn to do things His way, your life will be such a blessing to you and to your family and to those coming after you. Christ is not taking anything from you. Yeah, sure, there are some habits or some things in this world that we think we have to give up. You're, you are not giving anything up. Anything that God requires you to lay down and, and leave, He will give you tenfold. In this world, and in the world to come, as Scripture says, He will bless your life in this world, and you will be a blessing to those around you, and you will have joy that you've never, a peace, and a joy that you've never known. The closer you get to the Lord Jesus Christ, the closer you get to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the more peace and the more joy you will have. We're going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Where am I at? I'm at the end of this. Not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. And here's a key given to us. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You don't take a text and build a philosophy on it. You compare scripture to scripture, here a little, there a little. The key to unlock the scripture is the scripture by the Holy Spirit. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. What does that say? Sometimes the natural man can. If you do not submit, how do I say it? If you do not humble yourself before the living God and seek His face, you will not receive of the Spirit of God. If you walk in pride, I'm not like other men. Remember, who, who walked away justified that day when the Pharisee and the publican went before God? The Pharisee eloquent, you know, was eloquent and prayed and the other one wouldn't even lift his eyes but said, well, what was it? Have, have mercy on me, a sinner? Something like that. Who went away justified? The humble man. See, Christ said, I didn't come to save the righteous. If you're righteous, then I guess you have all you need to save yourself. But as you grow old and start to fall apart, you might think differently. That you're not all powerful. It is the living God that can lift you up. Humble yourself before the living God. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. It says, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's what you have to pray for, ears to hear. Christ said it over and over. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
Did he say, he who has ears, ears to hear, I'm going to hold it away from you? No, it's to trigger the thought in your mind, how do I have ears to hear? How do I get these ears so that I can hear? They're spiritually discerned. They come from God. We just read that. All the treasures and all the knowledge are in the Father and in the Son. So here is that text. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those, uh, those around him... I'm sorry. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So who is the truth of Christ for? The people of God. Those that have given themselves to him with their whole heart. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries. Children of God, we've been talking about, talking about the hidden things of God. They are not for someone else. They are for you. They're not for someone else, but they're just waiting for you to access them. And how do you access them? Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It, that's why Christ said, if you abide in me and I in you, it comes from your connection to the Lord Jesus Christ and listening to the Spirit of God and learning to reject the philosophies of this world. That takes learning. He answered and said, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Someone may misunderstand that. It, it, is, it is not given to them because he loves some and hates others. It's because some seek him and some do not. It's because someone want, some want to give themselves to him and some do not. It is because some love evil and some desire to be pulled out of evil and to be changed. Are you among those? Do you truly want to hold on to your evil, your sin? All sin will be destroyed pretty soon. And if you are attached to sin you will die with it. But if you are attached to Christ, He will uproot that sin from your life because He is faithful and He will do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close here. Um, two texts. Quick texts, I believe. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to who? His saints. To them God willed to make... What did that say? Did we not read another text that was very much like that? That he ordained this light or this truth? And again, the word glory is used here. It says here, to them, who? The saints, the people of God, those who have accepted Jesus Christ and desired to be with Him and desire a change of heart, have asked Him to come in. As He knocks, you open the door, you let Him in. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Now look, you can't miss this. It is imperative that you do not miss this. What is this mystery? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery. How do you gain life and a way out of this world? Who is the way, the truth, and the life? He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. If Christ is in you, you cannot fail. It isn't that you cannot fail. It is that Christ will not fail. And God has willed it that you know and understand this. 
If you are here today listening to this message from the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart today, God has willed to make it known to you. You should rejoice. Because Christ wants you in His kingdom. And Christ is going to make that happen if you simply abide and walk with Him. Because the mystery is that if you have Christ in you, then you have the hope of glory. One more text. Two texts, really, because there's a last slide with a picture. And you will seek me. Now, what does this say, this Old Testament text in Jeremiah? And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. See, if you are reserving part of your heart for yourself, and you're giving up nine-tenths of your heart to God, but you're holding on to one sin, this isn't for you. This entire sermon is not for you. It is for those that serve Him with the whole heart. Now that does not mean you even can do that of your own power. But you have the power of the will. And you have the power of choice. You can close your eyes when we pray in a moment. And you can say, God, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. All I know is I want you and you alone. And I want you to have my whole heart. That is all you have to say. The Lord Jesus Christ will seal you in the end. Because He has sent the Holy Spirit. He has kept the Word of God accessible to you. And He will take care of you to the very end. He is able to save to the uttermost those that come to Him. You will seek Me and you will find Me when you search for me with all your heart. And the light shines in the darkness. That angel, if that were to be the angel, the fourth angel, I think there's three angels there probably in that picture. But Revelation 18 angel, that is God moving upon his church in the last thrust for earth's salvation. Will you be a part of taking that light to shine in darkness. Yes, there will be many that fight against you, and there will be many that reject it, because the darkness can't comprehend it. But there are many of God's people out there that are longing for the light that you heard today. Their heart is longing for the message of God's Word. And the freedom that we have in Christ. And the power that is made available to His church. And there's no one there to preach it to them yet. But God may lift you up one day and start a blog. That was for a particular person. <laughs> um, and you may begin to share the message of the Word of God. And light may shine in the darkness. Because you pray beforehand that Christ attend your work. You may decide in your mind, I need to open a center to help the poor. And people get involved and God does it. And God is spreading the light. Will you be a part? I'm asking you to bow your head here today and I want to pray. And it's a simple prayer. Don't say amen if you don't want it. Lord Jesus Christ, I want your light. Lord Jesus Christ, I want to give you my whole heart. Lord Jesus Christ, I need you and your Holy Spirit and your word. Lord Jesus Christ, save me and make me a vessel for your use in this world. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.